Beware, she generally won't move on until the person she's haunting is already dead. Welcome. Hi. I live at my parents' house in a suburb outside of Tokyo. The last couple of weeks, my mother has acted a bit strange. She has told me multiple times that she feels like someone is watching her every step. Last night, I went to say goodnight to my mother and I found her staring at the floor in her bedroom. She told me that she feels as if someone is staring at her through the walls, floors and ceiling. She was scared that she was going insane. I am so worried. I talked to my father about it. He was just as concerned as me. My mother has always been a bit superstitious and scared of the dark, but this is different. She has never acted this scared before. It's almost midnight. I can't stop thinking about my mother. I decide to go see if she has gone to bed. I walk up to her bedroom door and knock. She doesn't answer, but I hear a faint wailing. I open the door. My mother is sitting on the floor in a fetal position and she has covered every single gap inside the room with yellow caution tape. I scream and run up to her. Mom, are you okay? What happened? It's first then I see the blood. My mom slowly turns her head to face me and I see two holes where the eye should be. I scream. What have you done? I ask her and throw myself backwards. It was the only way. The only way for what? The only way for her to leave me alone. I can't see her anymore now. I am so relieved. Who? The girl in the gap. Tsukima Una. I pull out my phone and call the ambulance. My dad decides to go to the hospital with her. But I stay in our house to look after my younger brother. I can't go back to sleep now. The images of my mother are spinning around inside my head. I walk over to her bedroom and start cleaning up the blood. I look over at her desk and I see that her computer is still on. I walk up to it. The website my mother visited minutes before she gouged her own eyes out is still on the screen. I start reading. Tsukima Ona, or the Gap Woman, is a female yokai that peers out from the gaps in one's room. Any gaps. It can be from between the dresser and the wall, underneath the bed, behind the curtain, in the drawers, absolutely anywhere. There's no gap too small for her, and the only way to avoid her gaze is to make sure that every single gap is covered. That means even the cracks in the floor, wall and doors. However, it's not a very practical way to live, nor is it guaranteed that you'll seal every single crack. She can appear in the tiniest area that the human eye might easily miss. You might succeed in covering it, but it will always be there, threatening to break free. Beware, she generally won't move on until the person she's haunting is already dead. I decide to go down into the kitchen to eat something. Afterwards, I go up to my room again and turn off the lights. I will try to get some sleep. It's going to be a long day tomorrow. I'm still so frustrated. I lay down in my bed. My eyes have just adjusted to the dark room. Wait, 
What is that? I look at a gap in the ceiling. No, it can't be. I see a pale woman with a disturbing smile inside the gap. She has long dark hair and terrifying eyes. I can't move. I'm paralyzed by fear. I hear the same sentence echoing inside my head over and over again. Beware. She generally won't move on until the person she's haunting is already dead. Hi, my name is Mary. It's four o'clock. I'm sitting in the school library and I'm almost finished with my homework for the day. And done. I open YouTube and start watching a video. After maybe 10 minutes, I decide to start packing my things and go home. I just have to check my social media first. I open up a new page and I'm just about to log in to my account when a pop-up fills my entire screen. I jump back in shock. On the screen, I see a very disturbing face. It's a young woman with long black hair, huge bulging eyes, a huge mouth with a big smile. I get a shiver down my spine and I quickly close the pop-up. While eating dinner, I decide to tell my parents about the pop-up. It was actually quite creepy and it wasn't a sketchy website, it was just social media. My parents don't really care and say that it was probably just an ad or something. It's the next day. I woke up early this morning. I couldn't sleep. I was just thinking about the creepy face in the pop-up. I go downstairs, eat some breakfast, brush my teeth, and then start walking to school. I pick up my phone. Then, out of nowhere, a new pop-up fills the entire screen. I almost throw away my phone. In my headphones, I start hearing a faint whispering. Grab, Grab a, a sharp tool. tool. I, I know you can find one. one. Just, Just do it, it and, and it will all be okay. okay. I don't want to listen to the whispering. It fills my entire head and it hurts my ears. But I can't really remove my headphones. It almost feels like I'm in a trance. I can't move my arms or legs. And then it stops. The sound and the picture is gone. I go to school. I can't concentrate. How could a pop-up transfer from my computer to my phone? I asked a couple of my classmates if they had seen something similar, but no one had. Did I imagine everything? It almost feels like it. Everything felt so weird. I was terrified, but warm and calm at the same time. It's four o'clock. I go home. There's no use telling my parents about it. They didn't care the last time. I go upstairs to my room and turn on my computer. My eyes meet another pair of eyes. I stare into the horrifying girl's glare. I can't look away, but I feel calm. I can hear a faint voice. Hi, you, you know, know what, what to do. do. Find a sharp object, put it against your wrist, and then cut, cut, cut. cut. You know what to do. Momo is waiting. I stand up. I have to find something sharp. I feel so calm, so happy. Hmm, maybe in the kitchen. No, what am I doing? Stop. My legs move by themselves. Stop, I don't know what is happening. I can't scream. Find a sharp object. Oh, that's right. I go downstairs open a drawer, pick up a knife, and go upstairs again. I sit down in front of the computer. I hold the knife against my wrist. I can't control my body. It's like someone has taken over. Cut, cut, cut. cut, cut. cut. I start crying. I hold the knife against my wrist. 
My mom storms inside my room, and I can move again. She rushes up to me. What are you doing? Why did you grab that knife? Are you crazy? I'm sorry. Momo made me do it. I couldn't help it. The next day, I was sent to a psychiatrist for trying to commit suicide. No one believed me what I had seen, but I was happy just knowing that I was safe now. When I was done, my mom picked me up and drove me back to the house. I go upstairs to finish some homework. I turn on the computer. Hi, Momo. You, you know, know what, what to do. do. Ready, Ready to, to try, try again? again? Yes, of course. Hi. I am so scared and I have no one to turn to. That's why I'm writing to you here on this platform. About one month ago, I started seeing this man. He was always wearing a hoodie. He was very pale. He wore an eye patch and he had a grim smile on his face. I saw him everywhere. He was following me. At first, I could only see him at a distance. For example, when I was shopping, I could see him entering another store. I didn't think much of it and thought that he lived nearby, and that's why I saw him that often. I saw him in grocery stores, in parks, on the way to my school, but always at a distance. Every day he was on the same bus as me, always one seat closer. Two weeks ago, my friend took the bus with me. I told her, That guy makes me feel really creeped out. I see him everywhere. She looked behind us, staring right into his eyes, and then looked back at me again. Who do you mean? I was shocked. The guy in the hoodie behind us. She couldn't see him. The blood drained from my face. A few days later, I saw him again, this time at my gym. My mom was with me at the time, and I told her about the guy and pointed. She couldn't see him either. This happened many times. A few more days went by, and I saw him all the time. He got closer and closer. This afternoon, when I was on the way home from school, he was walking behind me. I walked over to the other side of the street. He followed. I started walking another street, and he followed. I started running, and so did he. I heard footsteps behind me. The sweat ran down my back, but I didn't stop until I was inside my house and I had slammed the door shut. I am now writing this at 4 a.m. I have never been this terrified in my entire life. I don't know what to do. I fell asleep on my sofa in the living room. When I woke up, I saw him. The man is standing in the corner of the living room, just watching me with a huge smile on his face. Please help me.